The name has not changed, but what about the conversation around Washington's NFL team? Daniel Snyder, the owner, has taken to the offense with his checkbook and his message to defend his historic franchise nickname, while he says trying to address the actual needs of American Indians. We understand the issues out there, and, and we're not uh, you know, an issue. The real issues are real life issues, real life needs, and I think it's time that uh, people focus on the reality. Has Snyder changed the conversation, or is his newfound altruism for American Indian reservations destined to become nothing but a footnote in this ongoing question of his team's name? The team, their name, and the debate today outside the lines. And now, reporting for Outside the Lines, Bob Lee. Washington's NFL franchise is valued at $1.7 billion, and Dan Snyder owns that. He owns that and the nickname and all that currently involves. So when he recently wrote checks for 3,000 winter coats and a backhoe, and he lined up a shopping list of 40 more donations on Indian reservations to be serviced by his new foundation, when Snyder did all of that, was it enlightened interest in a pressing social issue, or was it the latest chapter in an evolving PR campaign to defend his use of an 81-year-old name for his team? Or was it both? Snyder rarely grants interviews, so on Tuesday, when he was announcing another charitable donation at a local high school, his motives and the nickname were questioned. You've kicked off this original American uh, foundation. Um, I mean, obviously you expected both po positive and negative reaction from it. Some people were saying you're throwing money at the problem or trying to, I guess, buy off. How would you respond to that? Well, I wrote a letter to the fans. I think it speaks for itself, and, and I think it tells you that we, we did our homework, unlike a lot of people, uh, and uh, we understand the issues out there, and, and we're not uh, you know, an issue. The real issues are real-life issues, real-life needs, and I think it's time that uh, people focus on reality. Last month, Snyder announced the formation of a team foundation to aid Native Americans following what he said was a tour of 26 reservations in 20 states. He wrote to Washington ticket holders to explain his initiative, saying, quote, yes, some tribes are doing well, and in our candid conversations, we learned that we share so much with Indian country. We find their appreciation of history, legacy, caring for their elders, and providing a better future for their youth inspirational and admirable. But the fact is, too many Native Americans' communities face much harsher, much more alarming realities. They have genuine issues they truly are worried about, and our team's name is not one of them. For too long, the struggles of Native Americans have been ignored, unnoticed, and unresolved. As a team, we have honored them through our words and on the field, but now we will honor them through our actions. Now, given the inevitable scrutiny on Snyder's original announcement, it was only a matter of several days before it was reported that the man selected by Snyder to run this new foundation, Gary Edwards, also leads a group which has been harshly criticized for business irregularities by the U.S. Bureau of Indian Affairs. So, four and a half months from the beginning of another NFL season, where is this issue now? Jossie Ross is a member of the Blackfeet Indian and Sioux Squamish Nations. He is an attorney by training, and he finds the attention on the team name both encouraging and suspicious, and those are his words. Hello to Ray Halbritter. He's the CEO of the United Nation Enterprises, and he has acquired a national profile on this issue over the past year. Dave Zirin, sports editor of The Nation, and you can read him at edgeofsports.com. He lives in the D.C. area. And Evan Redmond is with the fan website, sonofwashington.com. Welcome to have you all here. Ray, what did this outreach, 26 reservations, 20 states, the donations, the foundation, to you, what does this represent? Well, I, I certainly think there are great needs among the Indian people, and I think it's good that Dan Snyder has discovered Indians after 10 years of owning the team. I just think, however, the timing isn't, uh, doesn't suggest a genuine interest in the welfare of American Indian people. If you really wanted to respect Indian people and do something for them, you'd stop the kind of damage that is be done, being done to the self-image and self-esteem of our youth. No community, no people can succeed in their lives or in the communities without a good belief in themselves and when the racial slur is being used to make a profit by a national football team at this level it only does damage to the self-esteem and the self-image of our youth. Jossie, and that's, a, that's a serious problem and that is reality. 
Jossie, what do you find to be, you said you were encouraged by a lot of this attention on the nickname and also suspicious. What do you find suspicious? I, I find it suspicious that um, folks would, the conversation's happening, but it seems that we're talking around native people. Absolutely, this is an, I, I think that Mr. Snyder is halfway correct, that there's absolutely other issues. However, it's not his place, nor is it any other outsider's place to say what are the pressing issues within our communities. Native people have not arrived at consensus on this particular word. There's people that feel very strongly for it. There's people that very feel very strongly against it. However, it's the, uh, it's the height of, of arrogance to me that um, non-natives, a white man, would, would superimpose his will and say what the real issues are in either direction. It's almost an analogous, and you've made this point, to the N-word debate. A absolutely. It's, you know, that's still a word that has a lot of baggage in both directions. You have rapper, a rapper named Nasir Jones, otherwise known as Nas, who had an album in 2008 called Nigger. You have Jay-Z who uses the word extremely prolifically, and then you have other people who say that it serves nothing but to destroy made, uh, excuse me, black African-American communities. And there's no consensus on that word, yet you don't have a white Jewish man who says, no, this is the way it should be used, and you have more pressing issues. You should be focusing on the 500 gun deaths in Chicago instead of focusing on this mm -hmm. issue. Dave. Yeah, I, I would just also, of course, point out that uh, the N-word is not a billion-dollar brand of the National Football League, and it's the height of hypocrisy when you have Roger Goodell say that he wants players to stop using the N-word while continuing to profit off of a dictionary-defined slur. Look, you mentioned early, Bob, that this is about Dan Snyder going on the offensive, and I just want to say there are few people on planet Earth who are more offensive than Dan Snyder you when he's going on the offensive. Play. You can do better than a word play than that, Dave. Uh, Come on, I know well, you. Let me, well, let me roll, let me roll with, with this then. Dan Snyder made his money in communications. Few people are worse at communicating right. to the public than Dan Snyder. You, there you go. There's one. Right. You, there, you, there, 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 you mentioned Roger three. Goodell. You mentioned yes. Roger Goodell. Let's, he's spoken about it. He was questioned at the Super Bowl. Let's go back to last October. I also then want to hear from Evan from uh, SonsofWashington.com. This is, it may not be the freshest, but it is the most representative of Roger Goodell's thinking on this issue. Do you feel the name is a racial slur, number one, and should it be changed? By no means, growing up in Washington and being a Redskins fan, uh, have I ever considered derogatory as a fan. And I think that's how the Redskins fans look at it. Uh, and the Redskins have always presented as part of their tradition and their history. And uh, hail to the Redskins is, is part of that proud tradition. Uh, but whenever you have a situation like this, you have to listen. And recognize that some other people may have different perspectives. And clearly there are cases where that's true here. And that's what uh, I've suggested, and I've been open about it, that we need to listen and carefully listen and uh, make sure that uh, we're doing what's right. All right, Evan Redman. And, of course, to clarify the relationship, Dan Snyder is one of the 32 bosses of, of Roger Goodell. You've heard Chelsea Ray and Dave weigh in. How has... What Snyder talked about on Tuesday, the outreach and, and the visits and the donations and the foundation, how's that being received to your mind? Well, you know, uh, there is a little bit of skepticism about it because of the timing. I mean, that's natural. Anybody with half a brain can kind of see that, you know, there is a, a, a correlation between the timing there. Uh, I think most fans of the Washington Redskins are kind of over this issue, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody. I mean, they've, it's been around for so long, and it got, you know, kind of kicked up in the high gear last year with Obama and Bob Costa saying about it. And I think most fans are just kind of like, oh, okay, this again? When is this issue going to go away? And you know what? It's probably not going to go away because there are certain individuals with a vested interest in making sure this issue stays in the forefront as much as they possibly can. Who, you, who, who, do, you mean? who just, do you mean? When you say that, who do you mean? Well, obviously, there's a lot of sports writers who, you know, get a little bit of traction uh, from this issue. Every time they write about it, their article gets a little bit more clicks than some of the other articles they write. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, so, you know, if you're trying to make a name for yourself in uh, web writing and you write an article that gets a lot of clicks and you realize, hey, this topic is hot. I'm going to keep writing about this and I'm going to be as nasty as I possibly can. And I'm going to put a picture of Dan Snyder with little devil horns drawn in like a child. That's what I'm going to do. And, you know, Bob. that's unfortunate that that's where we are with this, but I will say this. Please understand that, you know, whether the timing of this issue is, you know, you know, a little bit concerning to some people, 
a lot of people end up at the best places in their life, not by virtue, but by circumstance. They don't, you know, necessarily wake up trying to be the best person. They realize something has gone wrong, and they try to do better. Honestly, I think that's what Dan Stiegel is trying to do here. All right, Dave, and, and I know you want to react to the point about the media, but also, let me just ask you also, 26 reservations in 20 uh, states in, in, in visit. That's what Snyder says he's done. Uh, that's not just a drive-by. What some would say that's representative of a substantial effort. So respond no. to that, and also, also the point that Evan made about the media having a vested interest in perpetuating this. Yeah, it's it, frankly it speaks to the the amount of pressure that Dan Snyder has been under that he had to do something like that. Look, I mean the name itself gives it away. The Washington Redskins Original Americans Foundation. Why not the Washington Redskins Redskins Foundation? He's not doing that. I, I can't stand the argument that says this is about the media. Although I do want to praise Evan for having the courage to do what the team won't do, and that's defend its own name in a public forum. Him, but it's it's so condescending to say, well, the media is driving this because it ignores the work of Ray Halberder. It ignores the Navajo Nation, the National Congress of the American Indian. Uh, I could go on and on. Uh, the, the Choctaw people, mm -hmm. the Seminole Nation, tribal nations that have voted to say, Dan Snyder, change this name. Jossie? Here's the thing. I'm an attorney by trade. And so one of the things that I'm very familiar with professionally is hush money. And those are called negotiation settlements. Anytime you have a settlement, that's saying that I have this much liability, I have this much potential liability, so in exchange for it, I'm going to settle for X. You mentioned, Bob, thank you very much for the term, uh, a substantial investment in this. But the substantial investment that he's outlaid is nothing compared to the losses that he has potentially if this whole process goes all the way through. And, and so he's you know, trying to settle for pennies on the dollar by offering a few coats, a backhoe, some other things. That's nothing compared to with the liability that he potentially has here. Ray, have you ever had any meaningful correspondence with Dan Snyder? No, I haven't. And I, I think the issue is really, uh, a large extent, which side of history are you going to stand on this issue? I mean, the longer that he, they refuse to change the name and address the real issue of respect and inclusiveness for people in other high schools, Cooperstown High School, the Houston City Schools, these younger kids have shown more understanding and respect for American Indian people than these wealthy NFL owners and the NFL itself, a tax-exempt organization. I think the tax-paying public isn't going to continue to want to subsidize a, an effort that uses and profits from a racial slur. It's, it's defined in the dictionary. It, it, there's no gray area in, in the use of this name and, and its effect and damage on Indian youth. Even though I know, Josh, you have parsed it, a, saying a lot of American Indians don't spend time thinking about this, and B, yes. the term red is used among American Indians as a, a fraternal term. Absolutely. But once again, this is a discussion. It's up for us to decide, right. similar to the term nigger, the internal discussion that has to happen. Uh, far be it for a group of white men or white women or non-natives generally, just like I couldn't go into Nas and Jay-Z's discussion and say, look, this is how you should use the word. It's not a term of endearment. This is for our internal discussion and edification before anybody else can have sway with that word. I'm going to play a piece of tape from the National Press Club. It's the humorist Lewis Black, who makes several points, and I think his final point is most remain to this conversation. Let's go back a little bit in April and listen to Lewis Black. What's interesting is you, you're born and raised here, and I've been a Redskin fan uh, all my life, and so it's not got any connotation to me at all. It doesn't even mean it. It really means nothing to me. It's just the name, you know, and I see it on the helmet, and it doesn't, it's just like been there for so long. But in terms of the, the reality of things, um, you know, it's everybody in the room knows if, if it was the Washington Jewy Jews, um, people would say, well, I think maybe we're going to have to change that. <laughs> and then Daniel Snyder said that he was going to keep the Redskin name, and since that's what he wants, I'm dead set against it. Which is a comedic <laughs> point, Evan, but uh, how much truth is bathed in that, in that, in that jest? How much of Daniel Snyder and the reaction to him and the fact that he is perceived as being polarizing, how much of that is wrapped up in this issue? Well, uh, let's face it. I mean, you know, even a lot of Redskins fans haven't been happy with some of the things that Daniel Snyder has done uh, over the years. He's an easy target. He's one of the easiest targets you're ever going to find. And, and that's I'm not trying to let him off the hook and saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't make him a target because he's easy. It's just that, you know, there's always traction there. There's always something that's easy. You know, it's, a, it's an easy target to, to say Daniel Snyder is, is a bad guy. 
Uh, and no one is, is going to disagree with you on that. And, you know, you're going to get a lot of people patting you on the back if you say this. Um, there's, there's been a, uh, some discussion on, you know, this particular conversation about, you know, whether or not the word Redskins is a slur. I, I just wanted to address that for a second because I, it is. If you look up in Webster's Dictionary, it says usually a slur. Um, and I talked with uh, some members of the Mackinac tribe just about, I don't know, a few weeks ago. They contacted me. They contacted SonOfWashington.com and wanted to get some of their story out. And I asked them directly, and they ask you, have you ever been called a redskin in your entire life in a derogatory way? They said no. And I said, do you think the word is a slur? And they're like, ah, you know what, I kind of like the word. It gets the name out there. And there are so many other worse things. It's not even really in the same ballpark. Bob, so Bob, this is, one of, the, but listen, but this is one of the reasons why this issue is so complicated uh, it, it, is because Native Americans themselves can't decide on this issue. All right, Jesse, I, I want to no. address that very specifically well, really that, quick. That's not, that's not accurate. A, 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 yeah. Amongst, amongst African Americans, there's no consensus on the word nigger. However, I challenge the young man who's speaking on behalf of Sons of Washington that he won't go and use as an excuse. I talked to a black man, you live in Washington, D.C., on K Street, and he said it was okay to call you nigger. You're not going to do that as an excuse or as an empowerment for you to use that word. And I suggest yeah, that you I, should I probably treat this other word the same exactly way. The same thing. Those two yeah. are very similar. The same you see, they're not, but they're it's not for you similar. to it's it's not for you to say whether it's the same thing, Evan. It's actually the yeah, height of arrogance for you to classify this. To and and you know, and the problem with saying, well, I know this person, and some of my best friends are Native Americans, and they said this to me, is I could tell you the story about a woman named Mary who I spoke on a panel with from the Omaha tribe who was beat up at her majority white school while being called a redskin. It's like we could do stories back and forth all day. The fact of the matter is, you have tribal authorities that have voted to say. Daniel Snyder changes his change this name and when he says it's not a real issue when he says that it doesn't matter how people see themselves because I'm Dan Snyder and this is what I say you know what it comes off as it comes off as patronizing and it comes off as racist where is the center of power on this issue if it's going to change Jossie certainly not going to change from the res because American yeah. Indians are fighting for a political voice if it is needs to change Wh where's the real center of power if this is going to change the, the, ch the power is in economics. I mean, at some point, Dan Snyder is a businessman. And ultimately, Coca-Cola spent tons of money to protect their brand. Every time you drink Coke, you hear that song, I'd like to teach the world to sing, right? It's happy thoughts. People are start, starting to not associate Washington Redskins with happy thoughts. It doesn't help that the team sucks, and they're going to suck for some time. And you combine that with the fact that he has this baggage every single day that he has to deal with. At some point, this is going to be a debit, a demerit to the team. How long will and that at that take? point, he needs to seriously rethink his business model. How long do you think that's going to take realistically? Uh, realistically, I'm thinking that within three years that there is going to be a very serious conversation about other alternatives to this name Washington Redskins and where will that impetus come from will it come from the league Dave Zarin will it come from fellow owners will it come no. from Dave, Dan Snyder himself will it come from his balance sheet no, you know what it's it, going to come, come from? from in, in three sheet. years, in three years, Dan Snyder is going to want to move the team out of the Maryland suburbs and put him in Washington D.C. Well, He's going to need a billion. They won't take no, him no, because they, of the they name. Will, but they said he. They said they would if he changed the name. They already have the plot of land out, a billion-dollar yes. publicly funded stadium. But he's going to have to change the name first, and that's when Dan Snyder is going to have a moment of truth. Evan, Absolutely. Do you, Evan, do you agree that uh, the sighting of a stadium would move Snyder on this issue? Uh, you know, the D.C. Council has on one hand said that they want him to change the name, and then they kind of said, well, hey, come back to Washington. We've got this huge plot of land. And the name really wasn't mentioned when that came up. I mean, the D.C. Council, uh, you know, I have a few things I'd like to say about them. And let me just say that I don't really know how much, you know, power they really have over this issue. I think, it, I think it, if it came down to if the only way Daniel Snyder can move the team back to Washington is changing the name, the team's probably staying exactly where it is, a stadium in any way. Ray, where do you see the balance of power here and, and the buttons that really realistically, politically, in the real world need to be pushed? Well, I think what's great about America is when many people speak up, it does make a difference. I think especially 
regarding the tax exempt status of the NFL. I do think there's a lot of economics here, but I well, the tax exempt status though is basically you know, just the league office. Is, though what, what, it's a very it's a very small portion of the league. I mean, the teams are are taxable en entities. Yeah, but it's still there's a pr there's a principle involved here though. Taxpayers are still subsidizing it. But the other thing is um, there there's some real issues I, I think about uh, people not understanding people who are not targets or are victims of this use often will say it doesn't affect me it doesn't mean anything Louis Black he was right we know that a lot of people really aren't affected so why what's the big deal well the big deal is for people in communities when I became a leader of my people and I became a father and started to have to deal with the way my young people my children think about themselves and trying to set goals for themselves and understanding this place in society it's critically important especially when there the teen suicide is an epidemic it's one of the highest rates in the nation among Indian reservations these are real issues and I want to deal with the with the disease not just deal with symptoms I want to try to go to the heart of this and and this country stands for so many high ideals every symbol in Washington is for high ideals that we want for our nation and for our youth and this name is antithetical to all of those symbols that we have in our country's capital Jossie you'd said the three years Evan quick guess your best informed judgment if the name is going to change what do you see as a timeline quickly you know, I don't know. I mean, probably more than three years because it's going to take yeah. at least longer than that for the owners to come to a decision. And until the owners... Is it an owner's like decision? The name? Is it an well, owner's decision? Because, yeah, because honestly, the owners are, really don't want to see the name change, not just because of the brand, but because you open up a Pandora's box. You know, once the Redskins go to the Blackhawks, to the Indians, oh. to all the other teams with these a names... A lot of dominoes uh, are teed up on this issue. It, Wish we had more time. Yeah. Chelsea Ross, it's good to have you visit us for the first time. Thank we hope you, to have Bob. you back. Ray, always a pleasure. Dave Zirin and thank uh, Evan, thank you so much for joining us outside the lunch. You can continue you, the conversation on our Facebook page. You can also follow me on Twitter at Bombly ESPN. You can download our podcast. Subscribe at iTunes. We'll zap it to you each day.